Okay, let's talk about the MTEL, Elementary Education Math Assessment. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for this uh, assessment, and that's excellent, meaning that you are looking to become an uh, elementary uh, educator in the state of uh, Massachusetts. So that's fantastic. And what we're going to do here is take a look at a uh, practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for the MTEL elementary education math assessment. So we'll get into that problem in just a second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over the last several years, I've constructed many, many online math courses, really comprehensive math courses, to actually include an MTEL elementary education math test prep course. So if you're interested in that or checking that out after this video, I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video, and you can go ahead and check that out. But um, a little bit more on this particular exam. Um, a lot of, uh, oftentimes, not all the time, uh, elementary educators, when they go to, you know, uh, start studying for their exams and they start thinking about the math sections on these particular assessments, they might, you know, it's logical to think that, okay, I'm going to be an ele elementary teacher, so they're just, you know, the emphasis uh, in terms of the math is going to be elementary math, right? So place value, decimal, basic fractions and stuff. Uh, so that's, it's logical to think in those terms. However, the, the reality is that the math that you need to know to do well in this assessment is far more than just elementary math. You need to know that those concepts as uh, well, place value, et cetera, all the basics and foundational math that you're really going to be focusing on. But you're going to have to know a considerable amount of high school level math, okay? Algebra, geometry, et cetera. So if math's not your thing, well, you need to warm up <laughs> with it, do some studying and whatnot, uh, so you're fully prepared for this assessment. So um, with that being said, let me go ahead and show you the problem, okay? And uh, now, without the aid of a calculator, right? So definitely no calculators. That's what the whole idea here is. Um, this is a problem that you should be able to handle pretty nicely, again, if you're prepared, uh, fully prepared for this exam. All right. Now, this is, I would classify... This is a real basic level algebra problem. Now, you've definitely learned how to do this, and I'm sure a lot of you are like, oh yes, I remember these type of problems, but I can't remember exactly what to do. Well, that's you know a normal response, but that's not gonna serve you well on the day you take this assessment. If you see a problem like this, you have to be absolutely certain what to do, okay? Again, a basic fundamental type problem, and here it is, right? So we have the square root of 12 plus uh, 5 square root of 3. I'd like you to simplify this if possible, right? It may not be able to be simplified, but if it is, if you're able to simplify it, simplify it, okay, and write it uh, using the square root or what we call radical notation. All right, so hopefully you understand what I'd like you to do in this problem. Uh, definitely encourage you to pause the video. Don't go on, you know, Google and search out how to do this problem. Just hey, you know, think about it for a second, and obviously I'm going to solve it here. All right, so no calculators. The whole idea is not for you to go in and get some sort of decimal value here, decimal value here. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay, I'm looking for your understanding of how to work with square roots or radicals. All right, so let's go into it now. And uh, let's start with this, the square root of 12, all right? So the, the thing here is this, can I write the square root of 12 differently? Can I write it in a uh, simpler form? And the uh, answer is yes, you can. Just like we can write a fraction 20 over 30, okay? That is not in its simplest form, right? We can reduce that, and its simplest form of that number is two-thirds. Well, radicals or square roots have, you know, the same kind of uh, concept associated with them. We can write these uh, radicals in simpler forms, and we should, okay? You shouldn't leave a radical like um, non-simplified if it can be simplified. It's like writing a fraction 20 over 30 where you want to write it as two-thirds in its, full, its fully simplified manner. So when you're studying square roots, this is kind of the beginning points um, in terms of working with square roots. So let's go ahead and talk about how we simplify a radical like this. Square root of 12. Okay, so the square root of 12 I can think of, and I want to think of as the square root of its factors, right? So there's a bunch of factors, well, not a bunch, but there's, you know, 1 times 12, 
uh, 6 times 2, and oh, we have 4 times 3. So 4 times 3 is a nice way to, uh, nice pair of factors of 12. Okay, so the square root of 12 is equivalent to the problem, the square root of 4 times 3. Right, just intuitively you can see why that's the case. But now you might be interested in this little 4, right? So numbers that um, we call these perfect squares, 4, 9, 16, 16, 25, etc. So these are nice numbers when we're talking about square roots, right? So why is that the case? Because if I said, hey, what's the square root of these numbers? You would immediately, without your calculator, be like, oh, that's easy. That's 2. This, by the way, these are all positive negative, but that's another discussion. But uh, this is 2. This is 3. Oh, this is 4. This is 5. So when we square these nice little numbers, we get these numbers, and we can find the square root. So these are called perfect squares. And we, uh, when we're dealing with square roots, problems like this, you're always on the hunt for these kind of numbers because they come in very handy. So the square root of uh, 12 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 3. Now I'm like, whoa, this is a perfect square. It's inside. It's part of, it's a factor of this number. I'd like to maybe get it out of here or do something with it. And the good news is you can. Okay. So the square root of 4 times 3, I have this one big radical here. I can write this this way, square root of 4 times the square root of 3, that's the same thing, or this is another way of writing the square root of 4 times 3, okay? This is what I was kind of getting at here, right? So you need to know this, uh, these properties, these uh, laws of how to uh, work with square roots, and this is a major one, okay? So we can rip factors apart into their own separate little square roots like this. Now, what's the advantage of doing that, right? Let me go ahead and uh, give us some room here. Well, knowing that, I could say, okay, this is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. How does this come in handy? Well, at this point here, I can now go ahead and find the square root of 4. That's going to be 2, right? So we'll write this as 2 square root of 3. Now, technically, it's positive and negative. We're just going to just leave it as 2 square root of 3. So the square root of 12 is now, we kind of wrote it in a simpler manner, 2 square root of 3. Now let's bring in the rest of the problem. Okay, that 5 square root of 3. Let me write that a little bit better. Okay, so now at this uh, point, and by the way, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, anytime you think you can answer the question, then you know you should just pause the video and and and, and answer it. If you're like, oh, okay, now I know what to do. Then then go ahead and 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 solve it. All right. So here we look that we have two square roots of threes here, and we have five square roots of three right here. This is very much like basic algebra, like two x plus five x. Okay. So what's the answer here? This is seven x. We have seven x's all together. So when you have the exact same uh, radical here, square root of 3, square root of 3, it could be whatever, and we're adding or subtracting, okay, adding or subtracting, you're going to treat it very, uh, exactly like like terms in algebra, okay, how we identify like terms. So here, uh, the answer is going to be 7 square root of 3, all right? That is our final answer. Okay, so if you understood that, got that right, and you're like, no problem, that was easy, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> kind of boring, I wanted a more challenging problem, hey, then, you know, you want to, you know, get into my math course or go, you know, look for other problems that are more challenging. But this is really, you know, fundamental stuff. Of course, if you were struggling and you didn't really remember any of this, don't panic, just use it as feedback. But when we're talking about square roots, you need to know how to simplify them, okay? Uh, that's what we just kind of did right there. And then you need to know how to add and subtract them. We talked about a little bit about that. Then you need to know also how to multiply and or divide, okay? And then there's some things called rationalizing as well. And so we can kind of go down a whole path of different things we need to know about square roots, radicals. And then you can kind of get into other things that, uh, you know, cubics, you know, like not the square root, but you can have the cube root of eight, et cetera, et cetera. So again, you can go down many tangents, but all these things you should um, have a good grounding in. 
you know, if you're going to be fully prepared for the MTEL elementary education math assessment, okay? Uh, these, are, these are professional assessments, all right? And again, the main point that I was trying to make here is that you're going to be seeing math that's just not all elementary level stuff, okay? Um, you got to know your place value. You got to know um, basic number concepts and all that kind of stuff. You know, you, um, you know, at the elementary level, you, you know, you all the way up to say, the fifth grade, you know, that's a lot of mathematics. You know, you go into the sixth grade, you're handing those students off and for uh, middle school math, and then they're going to get ready for high school. I've taught middle school and high school, and I was when I used to get, you know, great students. You know, in ninth grade, I was like, man, you know, all these teachers did a great job. All back here, you're really you know, setting these students up for success for middle school. So it's it's a, a, like a baton, right? And you got to, you know, get these students ready for, you know, things that they're going to be facing in middle school. And, you know, middle school, you know, you're doing basic algebra and geometry. You know, you, you can have accelerated students taking full-on algebra one or even geometry courses. So that means you're going to have to be doing a lot of that, those, you know, prepping those concepts, you know, at the elementary level. All right, so I think I hopefully, you know, um, made my point that you're going to need to know more than elementary uh, level math. Again, a lot of different ways you can prepare for it, but the, the main idea is to have a plan, okay? So again, it's going to wrap up this video. I'm going to leave a link to my test prep course on this assessment in the description. You can check that out. Also, um, I'm posting content all the time, almost, you know, just many videos uh, per week. I love uh, teaching math, and so I already have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel. So if you like my teaching style, and you, you know you you can learn from me, please check out uh, you know uh, the, all the videos that are on my channel. I kind of organize them in various playlists, so hopefully that helps you out, and you know becoming a subscriber is even better because I'm posting new and fresh content all the time. And if you enjoy the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, what's your um, kind of career path? You're going from high school to college to uh, teaching, which is a, a classical approach. And that's great because that means that, hey, you know, you knew, you know, early on that you wanted to be a teacher. But maybe you're one of these uh, folks that, you know, or, you know, or 20 years in, you know, as a, a real estate agent or a business or some other career, and now you're becoming a teacher. There's a lot of teachers that you know come into education um, from other careers and i think both are great paths especially nowadays there's so many different ways you can become a teacher just uh and i think uh, that is super smart uh for the system to be set up that way because we just need teachers we need a lot of teachers we need great teachers and um so whatever you know path that you've taken it's never too late to to you know make an impact okay so whether you've you know, uh, you don't have to be young, young, young to start teaching and whatnot. But the one thing I will say is this, even if you're, you're, you're starting teaching at 40 or 50 years old, it doesn't make a difference. The one thing is just remember when it comes to teaching, all right, irrespective of where you're starting, you just going to have to get that experience. All right. One year, two years, three years, four years. Look, you're going to get better no matter. There's just nothing that's going to prepare you in the classroom or any test or any, you know, degree, and it doesn't make a difference. Look, there's just nothing that's going to um, be more important for you as a teacher than good old-fashioned experience, working with real-life students, real-life parents, real-life curriculum, just growing and, and getting better. And that's why it's so critical that you latch on to experienced master teachers that, you know, that you can, you know, uh, learn from. You don't have to do it exactly. You don't have to use, um, you don't have to, be a copycat of them 100%, but tap into those teachers, get ideas from things that you like that works for them, and that way you'll find your style, okay? But give yourself the time to uh, gain that experience. Anyways, that's a little bonus here, and I couldn't help myself because I am passionate about you folks out there want to become uh, teachers. We so desperately need them in our country. But uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the MTEL Elementary Education Math Assessment. Thank you for your time and have a great day.